Hi, I'm Peter Birch, and in this show, we're going to have a look at some of the cool animals I work with here. Welcome to Critter Camp. This is Spot. Spot is a spotted python. I know it's not very inventive, but hey, that's the way I rolled back in 1994. That's the year that beautiful Spot here was hatched. And since then, Spot has been the one to inspire me to work with Antaresia ever since. And now I've got rooms full of Antaresia just because of this beautiful creature right here. He's one of the best natured animals I know. He is such a great ambassador for the species. He's been used in a lot of educational shows over the years and is really adept to being touched by humans. He's one of the best animals I can definitely guarantee he's not going to get munched by. Spot, great guy. We're here hanging out with my little buddy, Chainsaw. Chainsaw is a shingleback lizard. Now, shingleback lizards are typically a really calm, docile animal, but as you can see, Chainsaw here is not like that at all. And in fact, we almost have this little agreement that if I don't touch him, he's not gonna bite me. Shingleback lizards inhabit the drier areas of Australia. So we're talking over the Great Dividing Range, right through central Australia, right over to WA, inhabiting those drier areas. In this environment here where I live, it's a rainforest, there's a lot of humidity. A lot of humidity causes skin problems and also respiratory problems. So that's the reason why this guy doesn't live outside. But today is a really nice day. He gets to come out and have a bit of a wander around. And because of that lovely attitude he's got, you know, I'm happy to let him out and run around. Just like blue tongues, their closest relative, they have short stumpy legs, they live close to the ground, they have a large bulbous sort of shaped head, which is all muscle, made for crushing and biting food objects. In the areas where these guys come from, they actually have a plant called salt bush, which exudes a lot of salt when eaten. The shingleback lizards have been able to be able to sneeze the salt out of the plants. Therefore, when you catch a wild shingleback, they'll have a lot of salt caked up around their nose and around the bottom of their mouth. It's pretty impressive. Just like blue tongues, they also give birth to live young. Now, shinglebacks, larger babies, not as many babies. They can give birth anywhere between two to four babies. Each baby hits the ground, ready to look after itself. The female shingerbacks actually have some maternal instinct. So basically, they'll take care of the young. The young will follow the mother around. She'll almost show the babies what type of plants they can eat and what type of plants they should avoid and follow the mother for at least the first six to eight months of their life. That's pretty impressive. And I really like my mate Chainsaw because of his attitude. Like I said, most shinglebacks don't really have an attitude, but this guy, well, he's really, he's really keen to bite me. Another one of the beautiful species of pythons I work with here are my black-headed pythons. I bred my first black-headed pythons back in 1997. And I tell you what, that was an absolutely amazing feeling. And this is one of the babies from the 1997 production. She's a stunning animal and herself, she's actually produced a couple of clutches since then. I don't really breed a lot of them, but occasionally I put myself back to the test just to make sure I can still do it. I mean, look at these gorgeous creatures. That black, shiny, iridescent head. I mean, there's just something about them. They're not like a typical python with that broad head or the heat sentry pits. I know a lot of people and there's a lot of controversy about the front nasal scale here being a heat sentry pit, but unfortunately, there's no evidence at the moment. Just a lot of talk and a lot of interest. For me, these, these are just absolutely outstanding animals. They grow to a decent size. And I mean, look at this beautiful girl here. And I've seen them a lot bigger than this. I mean, they are just absolutely awesome animals. And I adore them. The next lizard we have is this beautiful bearded dragon. I really do love bearded dragons. They have the greatest personality. And that's probably seen throughout the world. The reason why they're swept throughout the world and become one of the most popular pets. They almost outnumber cats and dogs by the millions. These things are absolutely spectacular. I mean, straight from an egg, this beautiful girl, Mrs. M is her name. She's about eight years old. She basically sits on you. She'll sit on your shirt. You can walk around the house. You can hand feed them. I mean, bearded dragons are just absolutely amazing animals. They need lots of UV light, lots of heat, and lots of food. And just like most kids, you should be eating your vegetables to grow up big and strong, just like this beautiful bearded dragon. We're also working with these beautiful white olive pythons, the albinos. I mean, to have such a large, heavy-bodied animal that's just white is absolutely astounding, especially for us Australian reptile keepers. These guys are just absolutely gorgeous and got such a great temperament as well. I mean, sheesh. If you don't like olive pythons and their size, get them into white. 
they're just so much better. They're just absolutely gorgeous creatures and such a great temperament too. I and mean, we're hoping this year, like we have for the last year, to try and breed these guys and produce more of them. I mean, they are absolutely astounding and just gorgeous animals. This is Spud. It's a parenti, and he's a beautiful creature. I mean, he's no more than a year old at the moment. And I bought this beautiful creature from a legend, an Australian legend, Peter Kraus. I mean, look at this guy. He's absolutely gorgeous. I've fallen in love with him. Always wanted a perenni, and how could I resist not buying one from someone I really admire? I mean, look at this guy. He's absolutely gorgeous. Got this nice, big, beautiful head. It will grow to be Australia's largest monitor, getting to about three and a half metres. Now, that's a big animal. You've got to learn some respect for these beautiful creatures, and hopefully they'll respect my fingers as well. I mean, Spud, you're absolutely gorgeous. I love him so much. I hope you enjoyed today's show, having a look at some of my creatures that I really love so much. Just like Spud here, you know, he's an absolute beautiful creature. Please leave a comment below. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, Spud and I would say, see you later from Critter Cam.